Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna be giving you questions and answers for the air brake written exam. So if you're looking to get your CDL license, one of the steps that you will have to go through is actually get your CDL permit. Now, in order to get your CDL permit, you have to pass a few different written exams. One of them is gonna be general knowledge. We got a bunch of videos on general knowledge questions and answers. The second one's gonna be air brakes especially if we're gonna be driving a vehicle with air brakes, right? That's what this video is gonna to talk to you about. So we're gonna give you a few samples of our questions and answers, some of the most common questions and answers that you'll see on the test itself. And this is gonna be a good study guide for you to kind of go along with us and see if you actually know the answers before I give them to you. And if you like this and you want more actual in-person training, I definitely invite you to come to the best truck driving school in the entire country. Check out our website, cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, cdldrivingacademy.com. All right, let's get started. Question number one. When going down a long or steep downgrade, you should always A, apply light brakes on and off, B, use the braking effects of the engine, C, use light steady braking pressure, or D, shift to lower gears when speed is too fast. The correct answer here is B, using the braking effects of the engine. So depending on what part of the country that you're in, you might know that there's like 10 mile hills going down, or if you're in like in New Jersey area, you're not gonna really understand about how long these hills can actually be. So if you're only going on the brakes on and off like you do in a car potentially, by the time you finish a few of those hills, you're gonna have no brakes left. And if you have no brakes, it's not good to actually stop an 80,000 pound vehicle. So that's why the correct answer is B, use the braking effects of the engine itself. Now number two, the application air gauge shows A, the total air pressure in air system, B, amount of air pressure currently being applied by brake pedal, C, how much air loss has been used since beginning of the trip, or D, none of the above. So the correct answer here is going to be B again. So not every truck is gonna have an application air gauge. Uh, that means usually it's going to be kind of like its own gauge on the older trucks you might have it, but anytime you press on the foot brake, that application gauge is gonna tell you how much PSI you actually just used for that foot brake itself, for that air pressure. But it's not necessary, it's not required. This is one of the tricky questions that does come up. Let's do question three. The low air pressure warning will activate at approximately A, 60 PSI, B, 30 PSI, C, 20 PSI, or D, 80 PSI? The correct answer here is going to be A at 60 PSI. Now, depending on what state that you're in, if you see 55 PSI, that's gonna be the more accurate answer. If you don't see 55, you're gonna select 60. If you see 55 and 60, select 55. They're not gonna trick you that much, but there's a new rule that just came out last year, and now they want everybody to say 55 PSI um, for the low air pressure warning light. All right, now question number four is going to be, if you're experiencing a service air loss and the service brake system is no longer working, which brake system is used to stop the vehicle? A, we have our parking brake system. B, interlock air lock system. C, service brake systems. And then D, emergency brake system. So the correct answer here in a case of an emergency, like this question just said, is gonna be, of course, the emergency brake system. Now let's explain why. If you have severe air pressure loss, which means that maybe one of the hoses is completely busted and all this air is losing, What's actually gonna happen is the air gauge is gonna to start to drop dramatically. You're gonna get the 60 or to 55 PSI and then the low buzzer is gonna come on. From there, you're gonna start dropping to 20 to 40 PSI and the emergency brakes are gonna pop out automatically. Simply because the, when it comes to the actual emergency brakes, it's held back by a spring. So just so you kind of understand how this works, when the air goes into the system, it's going into the brake chamber and then it's actually gonna push the spring back. So once it's actually pushing the spring back because the air is now stronger than the spring, then there's not gonna be an issue. However, when the air leaves the chamber, what's gonna happen to the spring? The spring is then gonna push against there and it's gonna lock up everything for you and that's how you actually engage the emergency system. So the correct answer there again is going to be D, emergency brakes. Now, next question is going to be five. Air tanks should be drained at least A, daily, B, weekly, C, after each dispatch, or D, 
every four hours? The correct answer here is going to be A. And this is super important, especially in the winter time, because if you don't drain your air tanks daily, what winds up happening is condensation builds up. There's going to be water in the bottom of your air tank, which is going to build up even more. In the winter time, what happens to water? It freezes. That's right. And when water freezes, that turns into ice, and that means no air can flow through, and your brakes are going to stay locked up, and you're going to have to go to work, and you're going to have big problems there. So. Always drain your air tanks daily. That's something that we do here at our school. All of our instructors are instructed to make sure all of our air tanks are completely empty by the time of the night. All right, next question is going to be question number six. An alcohol evaporator. So A, injects alcohol into airlines to help prevent icing. B, it is used instead of air dryer. C, removes alcohol from airlines. Or D, should be used only on hydraulic brake systems. So when you think about the evaporator, it kind of sounds like it would be C because it would remove or evaporate alcohol, right? But that is incorrect. The correct answer here is going to be A. It actually injects alcohol into the airline to prevent from freezing. Not sure if you know, but alcohol does not freeze. And that's why you can drink in all types of weather, right? For those people who are drinking and driving, of course, we do not condone that and it is illegal, um, but alcohol is definitely gonna be a great way to reduce any type of icing that happens in your air brake system because like we talked about on the last question, if you have ice in the airlines, that means air can't get through and that means the parking brakes will never disengage and you're gonna be stuck. And the only way you're making money in the trucking industry is if these tires are rolling. So it's time to keep them rolling, rolling, rolling with a little bit of alcohol in there. All right, so next question is gonna be question number seven. The air compressor governor determines A, the amount of air sent to the air brakes when brake pedal is depressed, B, how fast the air compressor is allowed to run, C, the cut in and cut out pressure, or D, all the above. The correct answer here is going to be C. Now, the governor is exactly what it sounds like, which is gonna govern when the air compressor turns on, when the air compressor turns off. So the job of the air compressor is just to keep pumping air into the air tanks. The governor's job is to read how much air is in the air tank, and once it's full, it's time to tell the air, air compressor, hey, that's it, you don't need any more. What winds up happening is in most trucks, once it gets to about 120 PSI, the air tank is now full, Will tell the governor that hey shut off once the air pressure gets to below 100 in most tanks in that case the governor is going to be like yo air compressor get your ass back to work we only got 100 psi left let's fill this puppy back up to at least 120 and then you can take another break so that's pretty much what the governor does now question number eight if you experience a sudden drop in the air system you should a you should continue driving and say an effective prayer that's definitely a good good response there. B, continue driving, but only to the next repair shop. C, keep your eyes on the gauge and hope it will build the pressure back up. C, stop immediately when safe to do so. So, the religious people who are watching this video are probably gonna think A is a good answer, but the correct answer here is going to be D. So you definitely wanna stop immediately uh, when it's safe to do so. Of course, don't stop in the middle of a highway with a whole bunch of cars behind you. Pull over to the side of the road when you can. And of course, then you can start praying if, if you're a praying person. I used to hear something from my dad who, I forget how the joke went, but it was like, when something bad happens, oh, when you have no brakes going down a hill, what you should be doing is put your head between your legs and kiss your you-know-what goodbye. So it's kind of a cool joke when it comes to air brakes itself. All right, so next one this is gonna be question number nine. Uh, at approximately 20 to 45 PSI, what should happen? A, the low air pressure buzzer will activate. B, spring brakes will apply automatically. C, nothing uh, unusual will happen. D, the air compressor governor will quit working. So at this point, once you get to 20 to 45 PSI, that's when the spring brakes will apply automatically. If you remember that demonstration I talked about when it comes to the spring and the air kind of fighting itself. Once the air gets to 20 to 45 PSI, the spring now overtakes it and it is stronger than the air, which means the brakes will apply. Same exact question that we talked about when it comes to the emergency brakes. Question number 10 is going to be, vehicle equipped with air brakes must have A, at least two air tanks, one on tractor, one on trailer, B, an air pressure gauge, C, a dual air brake system or D, automatic air drains. 
So the must have part is gonna be B. Now there's gonna be a lot of vehicles that do have a lot of these other things like uh, track the trailers do have a tank on the tractor, tank on the trailer, right? Uh, so that can be correct, but not all air brake vehicles have tractors and trailers. The, everything that has air brakes must at least have an air gauge and that is why that is the correct answer. And for the last question on this video, question number 11, if you definitely like this content so far, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It would definitely help you out. We're gonna be coming up with a part two of this video pretty soon. You only know if you subscribe and click on that, I think that bell button or something like that to get notified. All right, so now, number 11. When a driver depresses the brake pedal, what brake system is he using? A, service brake, B, emergency brakes, C, parking brake, or D, both A and B? The correct answer here is going to be A. So when you press on the foot brake, it's now sending air through the air, air lines itself. It's gonna go into the service brake chamber, and that's what actually engages the brakes. And that's pretty much the first part of air brake questions and answers. Hope you definitely enjoyed this video. If you subscribe to this channel, if you put a comment below, let us know which questions that you had, if you took the test or not yet, and we can put that on part number two of this video because there's going to be a few different parts coming on. And if you want to get your CDL license by the best truck driving school in the entire country, I definitely recommend coming to Driving Academy. Check out our website, cdldrivingacademy.com. Find the location nearest you. Again, cdldrivingacademy.com. We're open up seven days a week, so there's no excuse why you can't get your CDL training done. We have payment plans available. All you need to get started is as little as $500 down. And then we can also work out a payment plan for the rest. And then we also offer lifetime job placement. So we're here to help you out up until the day you die. And the cool thing about most of our programs and our most popular programs is a guaranteed training course. That means that we're going to give you over 100 hours of training plus unlimited tries at the road test, which means you're going to keep going for the test until you pass and no extra cost to you. So if you have, so if you have any other questions, make sure you comment below. We're always looking at our comments or responding to as many as we can, and then we can get you closer on your road to freedom. Thank you and have a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.